On today's Fit to Eat, I'm gonna show you how to make butter bean soup with ham, seared butter bean salad, and a butter bean puree with carrots and green onion. Registered dietitian Rebecca Turner will show us how to make a healthier corn dog. We travel to the Wise Family Farm in Punatok, Mississippi to see their butter bean harvest, and we have a very special guest, State Senator from District 49, Sean Tyndale, to help me put it all together. It's gonna be a great show, so stay with us. Welcome back to Fit to Eat. I'm your host, Rob Stinson. Today we have with me in the studio, State Senator from District 49, Sean Tyndale. Welcome to the show. Oh, glad to be here, Rob. Good, Good to, to have you. you up here in Jackson. I know you spend a lot of your life in Jackson, huh? <laughs> well, you spend a good bit of time up here each year. Yeah, well, right. this is going to be kind of fun. This will be a different twist for Jackson. Sure, much healthier than what I eat most of the time I'm up here, so yeah, this is going to well, be great. That's a good thing. That's huh? a good thing. Now, look, I know, I know that you've really focused on your health, though. I mean, we can kid around, but there's such a big movement in Mississippi, which is really why we do the show, and it's really fantastic that we have legislature actually working and helping in many different ways now. Well, you know, we've tried to introduce legislation over the last few years that help, you know, local farmers and, and farmers markets, allow them to do their own canning and, and make jams and pickles and, and, and allow them also to sell it so they can get those healthy foods out to the general public. And and recently, you know, finally Mississippi got off the bottom of the list in obesity. So I know. You know, that's a great step for our state. It absolutely is. So here's a good one. Okay. Butter beans, all right. Honestly, one of my favorite because you can cook them so many different ways. So I'm doing them three different ways, and actually in a segment later on, we're going to go to a actual farm that harvests them. Excellent. So to start the soup, I've got a pan over here that I'm getting hot. We're going to take in, in this whole process, you're going to notice no salt, mm. virtually no oil, and we're trying to stay away from any white flour or anything that's just pure fattening. Oh, very okay. Healthy. So to get it going, we'll initially start, I'm gonna spray the pan with a little zero fat spray. And this pan is hot, by the way. We're gonna put about a half a teaspoon of oil in there, not just the slightest bit. And the one thing you don't want in soup is to have it look oily. Then we can actually take and start searing those butter beans, some onion, and I tell you what, I'm gonna put you to work. You ready? Let's do it. All right, all you need to do is just kind of keep moving it around with the spatula so nothing stays and sticks on the bottom. And I tell you, you're gonna get the aroma right off the bat. There's some garlic going in. Oh yeah, smells great already. I know, isn't that amazing? And you know what's so nice about it? We were talking about farmer's markets. Just about everything I use comes from a farmer's market. If you go a little bit out of your way, you can so easily find one in just about every area now, huh? You, we can, and, and you know, and even Little pepper. even like down on the coast, for the first time over the last four years, we authorize people who catch a fish down on, you know, the Mississippi Gulf Coast, you catch some snapper, you catch some trout. If you caught it, you can bring it in one of your restaurants, a local restaurant, and they can cook it right there for you. Used to be you couldn't do that. So really? we're trying to encourage people to, to stay healthy, you know, eat, eat their own, uh, eat from their own small gardens, eat the fish they catch, bring it to a restaurant. Little ham. There. Little ham in there mm -hmm. now. And I tell you what, Ooh. that's a low fat ham. All right, you notice there's no real fat in there. The idea of it is not your typical ham hock, you know, loaded with fat, that we're stewing this so long. My belief is that if the vegetables stay the color that they were originally, then you've got basically the nutrients still in them. If you've overcooked them to where they brown, you've almost cooked them too long. So let's add in. Some red bell pepper, diced kind of fine, so nice. everything kind of yeah. stays the same. Can I ask you a question, Rob? Sure. I mean, we talked about not putting any salt in it. Yeah. Um, are there any health implications with pepper, or is that just a really good season? You know, pepper you is wonderful. I mean, honestly, there, there's a lot of comments that it doesn't digest as well, and some people can have trouble with it. But in moderation, and we're not talking about somebody overladen, you know, using pepper. It really has none, and the, the idea is you can, through fresh herbs, 
give the flavor so you don't miss the salt. All right. So you, you make know? up for the salt not being in there by putting the adequate amount of pepper. Exactly. All right, now here's kind of a fun trick. All right, we can thicken this soup, and this is up to the individual, however thick they want it using cornstarch, which the cornstarch is gluten-free. So it's a corn base, very, very, I mean, zero calories. So what you do, though, with cornstarch, and I'm going to do this in front, is take it, mix it with a liquid. So I've got some of the stock in there already. And then mix it when it's cold. That's where people end up making lumpy sauces with cornstarch. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to use it. My sauce is always lumpy. It's because they put it in when the sauce was hot. So now what we're going to do is put the stock in here, which makes up, this is a vegetable, no salt, okay. and no fat stock. So absolutely healthy. Then we're going to turn the heat up on high and let that start to actually really simmer. And I tell you what, obviously, and I mean, you can tell by looking at this, nobody's going to remember all of the ingredients. So if you're interested in any of the recipes you see on today's show, visit our webpage at mpbonline.org slash fit to eat, or better yet, join our Facebook page, MPB Fit to Eat. Okay, so now you start to see that sizzling around the edge. This is the time that we can take that, and I'm going to slowly pour, I don't want to make it too thick, but I'm going to pour some of that cornstarch and stock in. Don't need to start. And then if you'll just stir that up. Oh, yeah. And see you see how it's already kind of changing the texture. Right. Now, all I did, and I didn't mention this before, all I did was soak those beans ahead. So they, they were not cooked. They were basically fresh and raw other than soaking in water for two days. Now, why do you do that? They, it just tenderizes them. And, you know, you can make a point when I made and had the stock of using all the juice that they were in. So all the natural nutrients are still right there. Yeah. Really a neat way. Now, the thickness of that is just about perfect the way it is. So we're going to let that simmer a little bit and not overcook it. Ooh, that smells good. Yeah, doesn't it, though? Yeah. And it's got such pretty color. And when we go to serve it, I'm going to take and garnish it with some fresh parsley and green onion. So at this point, we're going to throw in the chopped parsley and about half of our green onion. And I tell you, if you'll stir that one more time, then we can really just let it simmer. We're going to save the rest of this when we go and actually serve it. But look at the color, how it's oh, yeah. vivid and light. You know, it's really got a great kind of look to it. All right, now we're going we're gonna to embark on making a butter bean salad. And I thought what would be really fun for the people out there would be to show them how easy it is. Fresh corn. Right. All right. So obviously we've been talking about farmer markets, you know, and having fresh farmers products going to the public obviously became a priority in the state, huh? Yeah. I mean, they're everywhere now. So oftentimes you wonder, okay, well, how can I make use of the corn? And that, all right, I've cut one end so it's flat and literally all you have to do is just come right down the side along that cob and you've got beautiful fresh corn as opposed to frozen corn or opposed to, you know, something that's actually been processed. And I love it this way because it's crispier too. So when we go to saute it, it stays perfect. I mean, that's so easy, huh? Yeah. And that's, you know, that's how we actually serve it to my kids. Um, and we tell them it's sweet like candy, eat the corn, and they love it. It they is. It. it really is. And you know what? It's funny. You're talking about kids. Tell them. Well. They don't know. You have a troop. Oh, I do. You know. Uh, how I'm, many kids? I got four kids. Four married kids. a good Catholic girl on the coast. And age, age. Seven, five, four, and ten months old. Woo! Three boys and a girl. And I got to tell you, the, de the girl's going to be the death of me. The boys, I can manage. The girl, a whole nother level. So. Well, you know what's great, though, is starting them at that young age of eating healthy. Absolutely. It'll become something that they do the rest of their life. You well, know? and that's one thing Claire and I try to institute in our children. And we, don't, we don't really keep any candy around the house. Uh, we don't have any junk cereals. Uh, we try to make them eat fresh fruits and vegetables. And, and, and because they have, they, they enjoy eating carrots and they enjoy right. eating corn. Um, and they enjoy eating those things that are fresh that we cook for them. Uh, it makes all the difference it, in the world. And I'll tell you what, that's the message that needs to go out to the state is we have to get, and sometimes it's ironic, but the kids will come home from a class and they'll tell the parents, how come we're not eating healthier food? Yeah. I hear it 
all the time in the restaurant business with people coming in and they're like, well, my kid said I need to come learn. And they're like, why don't we do cooking classes? And I'm like telling them, watch the show. Well, and you know a great thing, and my mom's really good at this. She was a great cook when I was growing up. And, you know, I would sit there with her and my grandmother and help them cook. And the children now, they love breaking the eggs. Right. You know, uh, putting the food in Everybody's the in the kitchen. Everybody's in the kitchen working together. All right, well, listen, let's take a little moment right now. Registered dietitian Rebecca Turner has a great way to make corn dogs healthier. I got to see this. When I was a kid, a corn dog on a stick dipped in ketchup was one of my all-time favorite snacks. And I bet it wouldn't be a far stretch to say that you or your kids enjoy corn dogs too. We can all agree that while they may be super delicious, corn dogs are far from a nutritious food choice. Commercially produced corn dogs are typically high, highly processed, they're deep fried, and they offer no real nutritional value. Now, while I haven't figured out how to make corn dogs a low calorie food, I can help you create a much healthier version at home using wholesome ingredients and baking versus frying them. These homemade baked mini corn muffins are healthy and delicious, plus they're just a lot of fun to make. It's super simple. You start with your favorite cornbread recipe and whip it up. And you're gonna use store-bought hot dogs cut into small uh, bite-sized pieces. To get started, you're just going to take a mini muffin pan and you're going to spray it with non-stick spray or you can dab a little butter or olive oil in there. Next, you're going to take your cornbread mixture and spoon in just enough on the bottom to coat the very bottom because you don't want your hot dog pieces to fall through when baking. I learned that the hard way. They will slip right out if you don't give them a base to go on. Next, you're going to take your bite-sized pieces and put one evenly in the middle. These things are perfect for as an appetizer as well as an afternoon snack for your kids. Now, once it gets settled, take the rest of your cornbread mixture and you just want to make sure that you're filling it all the way to the top. You want to make sure you can't see that hot dog in the tin. Now you would keep doing this until you fill up the tin or you use up all of your cornbread mixture. You're gonna pop it into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes until they're golden brown. You're gonna let them cool and then you're gonna enjoy them. You know, this recipe makes a lot, so feel free to freeze about five to seven in individual containers for a quick weeknight meal paired with vegetables and fruit slices and a glass of milk. No matter the name brand, hot dogs are still highly processed and they shouldn't be a staple in your diet, but let's face it, kids and adults love them. And there are healthier ways to enjoy them like we've prepared today. If you do this, you'll keep your corn dogs fit to eat. I'm sure your kids love corn dogs. Now you can make them guilt free. I mean, that's hard to believe, huh? That is hard to believe. All right. so. We're gonna do the puree next. Okay. And I love this. This is just kind of a different idea and people can take from this what they like as far as recipes for butter beans. This one, we're gonna heat a pan up with again, about a half a teaspoon of oil. We're gonna throw in our carrots first because they'll take the longest to cook. They're the crunchiest. Then our soaked butter beans, pop those in. Little green onion. Mm, flavor. Oh yeah, lots of stuff going on in this one. And then some garlic. Now, now the crazy part on this one is I add kind of a sweetness to this. Okay. So this is kind of neat and different. I'm gonna toss it around a little bit. And I tell you what, if you'll break up that garlic with that spatula, you did such a good job. <laughs> We're putting you back to work. Put this man to work. But you know, I mean, you touched on your family and all the kids and all and staying active. But Sean, I know that you've actually gotten serious about this, bringing a trainer into your life really focusing on, on health, huh? Yeah, we have, and, and my wife and I both go to the same guy. This is just water, just so you know. Okay, uh oh. Just to deglaze it and help it steam. We got a guy down on the coast, his name is Nolan Hallenburton, and he, uh, he meets in small groups of four or five, so you're kind of doing a team aspect, and, and you're doing different drills every day, you're doing cardio every day, you're doing a little bit of weight lifting. Um, and so it's, it brings a real healthy aspect. And, and in addition to that, he'll give you a diet plan. Really? Um, that really helps folks lose weight and, and get back let's, on track. Let's put, now this is the fun part of this one. This is actually cinnamon. And wait until you smell this mm. as we're cooking it. 
because it's going to give it a really unique flavor. And then just a little pinch of nutmeg. Oh, yeah. Nutmeg, for those of you out there, about one part nutmeg to four parts cinnamon is kind of a good rule of thumb. All right, let's take this. Add a little more water. I'm going to move it around, and actually, that looks perfect. Flip it. And then we are going to go into the trusty food processor here. I am going to add this in so we can puree it and have it ready to plate. Oh, yeah. God, the aroma is incredible, huh? Oh, yeah. Come, can you smell that? Can oh, you smell, I smell, I smell that right? from over here. Isn't that amazing? Oh, wow. I love that. Wow. I love that. This ain't my mama's butter beans, I can tell you that. <laughs> I love that. All right, this is actually a little bit of honey. And this is local honey. This is actually from Long Beach, Mississippi. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, we have a, uh, we have a Baptist minister who moonlights as a beekeeper. Now, one of the benefits I've heard to local honey is it actually helps your allergies. Absolutely. And we actually talked about that on the segment. Now watch how simple this, I mean, this really kind of works well because once you get it in there, all we do is make sure this got, top is on. Easier said than done, and then hit it. <laughs> and that puree is really being made. That puree is basically kind of there for us right as we do it. Let me push that down a little bit more. Oh, I love that aroma. You can you know, smell it. it. It's, yeah, it's, it's sweet and almost tart with the beans. Now, is that that nutmeg or is yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, that, that unusual aroma that you get. And then the same thing. Wow. And this, this is going to be great on the side of the plate to kind of go with the soup. And then we have a kind of a cool, crisp salad. Yeah. It's a little warm as well that we'll be doing. So it's really kind of a neat blending. And, you know, not everybody has ever eaten butter beans. Isn't that amazing? I mean, we're in the South. Yeah. To me, I take it for granted. But, you know, I think what's going to be really cool, on today's Down on the Farm segment, we travel to the Wise Family Farm in Pontotoc, Mississippi, to see their butter bean harvest. They really do it right. Join us. My grandfather uh, purchased this farm in uh, 1926. Uh, it was been a family farm ever since. He raised six children on uh, 80 acres. So now we have a fairly healthy little farm that we uh, try to raise uh, produce on. We call this the Wise Family Farm because that's what it is. And now the, my grandchildren are working here. I've got distant cousins and nieces and nephews that all grew up working here on the farm. So. We're, we think we have a real working uh, family farm and I want to see it continue into the future. And that's, uh, Catherine has shown an interest in the farm. And I didn't realize how much I missed it being out here with everybody and outside and on the farm and with the family. It was amazing. I was really glad to come, get the opportunity to come back. Uh, the butter bean is a staple, you know, crop in the South. You know, lima beans is what's known as above the Mason-Dixon line, but south we call them butter beans, and um, people love to put them up and eat them through the winter. Uh, we grew peas here for a long time, and people said, do you have any butter beans? Do you have any butter beans? Well, butter beans are very labor-intensive if you pick them by hand. And about six years ago, we got a machine that would pick uh, peas and butter beans, and so we began to plant butter beans as a crop. Uh, we can sell every bushel of butter beans that we can grow. The problem is it's a very difficult plant to grow. It's not easy to grow a butter bean. I have decided on this farm that I need to plant the butter beans by April 15th or either wait until about the July the 15th so that either I'll get off an early crop or either my crop will be off in uh, last September, the first of October before frost. Butter beans will yield very well uh, in, in Mississippi. The colored butter beans will yield a little more than the lima beans. However, the lima beans are more popular. So the, my dad drives the tractor and has a picker on the end of it, kind of harvests the whole plant. I mean, once we're going to bring the picker in there, we're not coming back again. There's nothing left. Um, it shoots it into a crate. Um, he comes back. We unload the crate into um, plastic 
bins and we let them sit for a while, um, let them wilt down is what we like to say, but basically just let the dew come off of them, like not let them be so wet. And then we pour them into the sheller. Um, I do try to do about two baskets at a time, just the, you don't want to have too many in there, but you don't want to have too few so that they beat together. The more you have in there, they kind of beat together. Um, and then the peas drop through uh, little channels and come out uh, the end of this wire and out into the bucket. And then at the end, I flip a, a vault door is what I would call it. And then the, uh, we dump the holes and that's how we do it um, for that part. Then we take it and spread it out on a screen and we pick out all the trash that our human eyes can find as all possible. And, um, we go to the Tupelo Farmers Market or to the um, New Albany Biscuits and Jams Farmers Market. Um, but other than that, we sell it right here or through orders. We do advertise like our peas and corn and butter beans we sell just strictly through the orders, it's easier to keep up with it. But um, everything else we sell right here on the farm. We have enough support in our community who love what we do. They love who we are. Um, they like coming out here enough that I don't have to farm it out, <laughs> market it out. All right, if you want to learn more about Wise Family Farm, you can check them out online at wisefarmer.com. So, Man, we're rolling along here, huh? It's been a good day. I tell you what. All right, so what we're going to do is the last dish. We're going to sear a little bit, and again, an extremely low amount. Look at that, not even a teaspoon. We're going to put our butter beans in. This is shallots. Shallots kind of look like a big clove of garlic, but they have a very distinct onion flavor. Okay. All right, then we're going to toss in our red bell pepper our garlic. Now, all that work we did on the corn, I love it. It goes straight in. And this is something you could serve hot or cold. So I'm going to toss this a little bit, maybe enlist you one more time, just to make sure that I think we're doing pretty good. How about, yeah, how about you do though, because I'm going to season it with just a little pepper. This is a mild dish, so it's not a spicy. And most of what we've done today hasn't been real spicy. A lot of my stuff I, I do kind of spice up. I don't want people to feel that they're missing something not having salt. Right. All right, but in this we add some beautiful fresh herb. So, mmm, smells so good. This is just some slivered basil. We've got a little bit of green onion we're going to toss in there. And then a squeeze of lemon. And let's see if I can get a little more. It wasn't enough. There we go. All right. And then we do our same trick with a little vegetable stock. That was popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who said you can't have healthy popcorn? That's uh, too funny. I don't think I've ever seen it do that. Yeah, isn't that funny? That's the difference of cooking fresh corn. Isn't that amazing? I mean, really, that truly is why it does that. So now let's kind of toss it around. All right, now if you would, what I'm going to have you do is hand me that large plate because we're going to actually put this whole dish together. And you know, you were talking about you know eating down on the coast and some restaurants, and I, I I love where you go, obviously because they're places I know too well. Well, you know, and that's one of the great things that you've brought, especially after Katrina is rebuilding the restaurants, some of them along the beach, and you have different themes at each one of them and every one of them have healthy as aspects. You've got your healthy menu at each one of them and one of my personal favorites is your seared tuna salad. And uh, not only can I try maybe your Italian restaurant or your, your other restaurants, your Mexican restaurant, but they all have the same type of foods but with different flavors to them. And I think that's what thing. makes it fun, just like us cooking here today. It's so easy to take things and kind of give them all a different flavor, even though we're doing butter beans. We have three completely different look. It almost looks like a cake yeah. with the puree. I mean, it's so delicious. Now what we're going to do is take this and just kind of spoon it right on the edge. Let me turn this around so it's going to be even easier. And, and that's oh, wow. a nice portion oh. of food. Now, when you said you could serve it cold. Oh, this salad is great cold. Do you, do you put it back in the refrigerator yep. and chill it? Okay, yep. so you cook yep. it, then you chill it. You could do this one ahead and have it the next day and serve it almost like you would have potato salad as a okay. side dish. You know, and it's, it's so flavorful. It really is. And then the last thing I like to do on these, make them look a little pretty. So I've got a 
little sprig there for the soup of some fresh roasted red bell pepper. Then we have fresh herbs everywhere around here. Really is nice. So what I do is I'm going to take some of these chives, tear them off, and then watch. Just tear them into little pieces oh. so they kind of stand up over on each of the dishes. Doesn't get any fresher than that. I mean, and, and you can really smell them too. Yeah. I mean, isn't that amazing? Just that oh, fresh yeah. smell of fresh onion and a little bit on each of the dishes, I think it adds a perfect touch. And I mean, that's a nice balanced meal. Well, it I really gotta, is. Got to tell you, growing up, my mom tells me my favorite dish was uh, butter beans. And, and, really? And I mean, I'm really serious that I never in a million years thought you could do this many things with butter beans. Well, you know, the next time you're, uh, you know, next time you're uh, at the Capitol, maybe that'll be your new name. <laughs> hey, that's All what right. it was when I was a kid. Let's, let, me, let me get back on topic here for a minute. If you're interested in any of the recipes you see on today's show, visit our webpage at mpbonline.org slash fit to eat or join our Facebook page, MPB Fit to Eat. Yeah, that wouldn't be too <laughs> nice. <huh? laughs> They've called me worse at the Capitol. I'll take butter bean any day. <laughs> well, you know what? I can't tell you. I mean, it was really a thrill for you to come and actually spend the time. I know your, your schedule's got to be even crazier than mine, but I think with the outcome of this meal is something that you can actually take back to your family and enjoy. Oh, absolutely, and, and glad to be heading back. We'll be heading home here in, in uh, first of May, and so it'd be good to get Well, home. I want to thank you, our state senator from District 49, Sean Tindell, for helping me out today. It's been a great honor, and I'm your host, Rob Stinson. Eat well.